Hello, thank you for downloading episode 79 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. I have two very exciting announcements for you. First of all, this weekend is Labor Day weekend, and if you're in Atlanta, that means you're probably going to Dragon Con. Guess what? Me, your good pal Hal Lublin, is going to be there too. I'm signing, I'm selling, I'm doing panels, I'm doing shows. You can find out all about that over at HalLublin.com. I've got a full schedule up there of where you can find me at different panels. I'm going to be doing stuff with Cecil from Welcome to Night Vale. I'm going to be doing my own solo panel. I'm going to be doing some Venture Brothers stuff. And you can come find me at the Walk of Fame uh, where I'll have stuff to autograph just for you. So go to HalLublin.com for that info. Second of all, Sunday, October 9th. 6 p.m., New York City, Hudson Mercantile. Mark and I are doing our second live recording ever in New York City. Coming back is our good friend John Hodgman, the first three-time guest in the history of We Got This with Mark and Hal. He'll be joined by our pal John DiMaggio from Futurama, from Adventure Time, and more. It's going to be a great show. We've got our good friend Carter Parton Rogers opening for us, and we have other guests that we'll be confirming and we will be announcing soon. To get all the information on that, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash we got this podcast we've got info on there and an event set up on facebook that has all the details you can buy your tickets now they're only 15 dollars, which is a hell of a price for this show so if you are going to be in new york in october for new york comic-con or if you live in that area come see us live on sunday october 9th it's going to be a great show we'll have more information about that as it becomes available but for now Happy Labor Day weekend this weekend, and enjoy episode 79 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Hamburgers or hot dogs at a barbecue or cookout. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hal, I'm having trouble talking right now. Tell uh, tell me why, and, and by extension, tell all the people who are listening why. Um, I have a mouthful of numbing... Right now, uh, I don't, did I use that properly? Is that the noun form of the stuff that numbs your mouth? My mouth is numb completely and I'm trying to talk to you and I'm trying to drink a mason jar full of water, which I can only feel on part of my face. I wish that this was a video podcast only now. <laughs> and only for me. Only now. <laughs> so it's like you have a giant dribble glass in front of you, but the dribble glass is your face. Yeah, I really do. And the problem is I'm leaning over electronics with a dribble glass. <laughs> this is a great idea. Boy, this is a – you're like Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> uh, we're not here to talk about coyotes. No. We're here to talk about a different kind of meat. That's right. Cow meat, Hal. Cow meat and pig meat and possibly chicken meat because – And whatever else they make hot dogs out of. Mark, it's Labor Day weekend. Now, when – as of this release, Labor Day weekend is coming up. I'll be in Atlanta for Dragon Con. You will be in Europe. I will. I'm sorry I'm not going to be at Dragon Con with you. I wish I could. I know. Me too. But but uh, I will hold down the fort here in America while you invade Europe and spread the word. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, the last time uh, an Italian decided to go to another continent and spread the word, it worked out real nicely and gave us the Crusades. <laughs> <laughs> Which gave us Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's true. When Indiana Jones was searching for the Holy Grail of We Got This. Yeah. Because isn't that what they were spreading also? Yeah. Yeah, they were there on a All press right. tour for a podcast. Our podcast. You know what that uh you know what that <laughs> that Holy Grail was full of? Tell me. Hot dog ketchup. Yes, of course. <laughs> Which is why it was <laughs> lost and never found again. Ugh. Oh. That. All right. Uh, so today's episode, who who do we have to thank for this episode, Hal? Steve O'Dockerson, who's been a day one listener to the oh, podcast. Oh, Steve-O. Hey, Steve-O. Of course. Our, our good friend. Uh, Hob the Troll, if you've never heard the Hobcast, boy, is Hob the Troll hilarious. Yes. Um, and you and I have both had the opportunity to play with uh, Hob 
He is a uh, Renaissance Fair staple and a podcast uh, hilarious anachronism. Yes. So listen to him. Yes. His his uh, shtick at Renaissance Fairs is he sings, and you can either pay him to sing more or pay him to stop singing. And he released an album <laughs> called Pet Smells. That's really Which I funny. Have a copy I of. have a copy too. He also mailed me uh, a uh, headshot, an autographed headshot. I have of one of those Patrol. too. <laughs> I've been on my desk oh, at man. work. All right, Steve-O. So uh, you want to know hot dog or burger at a cookout? Yeah, well. Uh, are you a cookout kind of guy? I am. I, I wanna... I'm not going to say barbecue, by the way. <laughs> well, if, uh, if because you. If... Barbecue is low and slow. Okay. But it, don't, and, you don't call it a barbecue if it's B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E? That's not different? No. No, I call it a grill out or a cookout. Okay. Yeah. It, or tailgating, depending if you're doing it at home, in a yard, in a park, or in a parking lot. Okay. So I will, I will concede that cooking out. We assume that's what he meant, not do you show right. up in Memphis and, and throw the ribs off the smoker and <laughs> toss in either a hot dog or a hamburger. Oh, I love the idea of slow smoking a hot dog for like 12, 18 hours. And then you open it up and it's just this hot dog that I'm assuming melts, right? It would have to melt because mm-hmm. doesn't cooking for a long time make meat melt? Yeah. It's, it's, it mm-hmm. just fills it with moisture and nothing can escape and it just becomes a hot dog puddle that you pour over a bun and then just eat a <laughs> wet hot dog bun. And that's oh, what you're doing when you put ketchup so on it. That so delicious. <laughs> Um, that would make me, that would make me so much faster at the annual hot dog eating competition in Coney Island. <laughs> have you been competing? You have you ever been in an eating contest at all? I was in a watermelon eating contest once, uh, where you had to have your hands tied behind your back, and you would eat a watermelon or a big wedge of watermelon with your face. And as you may have guessed, knowing that I'm a little fastidious, I came in last place because I was trying not to get watermelon juice on my cheeks. <laughs> and how old were you? Uh, about 24. <laughs> Not what you were expecting, was it? No, I was, I was hoping that you were like seven and doing that. And still that fastidious. Yeah. Oh no. At seven, I would have just buried my face into it. Well, it does take, but I'm a grown up now. Hal. Yeah. It takes a certain amount of time for that psychosis to really set in. <laughs> it's like, uh, the X-Men, you you don't get your mutant powers until like puberty. That's really when you start becoming a complete lunatic. I bu- all of exactly. us, not just you. Um, to answer your earlier question, though, I do. I love cookouts. I, I love them. I I like cooking on a grill, and I like having food that is made on a grill. Although I I I don't know. Is this sacrilege? T- tell me. I like hamburgers Probably. very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I love hamburgers, but I've, I've you're sacrosanct about every food from Philadelphia and from nowhere else. Well. Uh, here's the thing. I, I, I enjoy hamburgers on a grill, but I've, I, okay. a couple years ago for the 4th of July, Jennifer and I stay, our neighborhood sort of closes down. There's fireworks and stuff. So we got all our supplies and sort of stayed in and just walked around the neighborhood and stuff. And we, we didn't have access to the community grills, which, which is what we have. We're in sort of an apartment complex. So we don't have our own grill. We're not allowed. And mm-hmm. because those were all being used, I looked up what, what is a method for pan frying a hamburger? And not ruining it. And I, um, it's not ruining. You wouldn't ruin the hamburger. I'm sorry. Go on. Continue. Well, I was going to say I, I, I pan fried it and it was the best hamburger I'd ever had because it was cooked evenly all the way through. It was mo- mm-hmm. It didn't have that dry out that you get when you cook meat on a grill sometimes if you're not doing it properly. Right. Uh, you I, a burger cooked uh, in a pan on a stove is not going to ruin the burger. It's going to ruin your house for the next like 40 hours because oh, right. of the smoke and the grease. That I think is why you don't do it inside. I love a pan fried uh, burger. It's the same thing as cooking it on a griddle at, you know, McDonald's or wherever they serve fast food burgers. And I love a fast food burger. Sure. Do you, uh, well, I won't um, ask you your favorite fast food burger. That's another episode. Oh, that is a whole other episode, my friend. Do you, do you cook out a lot? I'm, I've always barbecued. Uh, I'm sorry, grilled. There I go. Now I'm doing it. Trapped you. Um, I know. See what you did? Uh, I've always grilled out, but it's tough in New York City because I don't have outdoor space where I could put a grill. Um, uh, but in Los Angeles and in parks, I love doing it in parks. They have grills everywhere. 
And, uh, yeah, I'm a big proponent of it. A gas grill at home. Did we do, we did gas or charcoal, right? We did. We came up with a gas grill. That was, that was the winner. That was, that was the one. Gas grills. I feel like we're going to do, there's going to be a little crossover from this episode and that one. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, and I will cook on a gas grill at home. Charcoal, if I'm out and about, uh, like in a park. Yes. Bottom line, I'm taking forever to say, yes, I love cooking meat outdoors (laughs) in an apron with a pair of tongs. It gives me something to do if there's a social situation and I'm like, I need something to do right now. I can't just be wandering around chatting. <laughs> I it, here, So here's here's what I'm thinking with this question, because it, mm-hmm. it would be easy to issue, you know, obviously, whatever decision we come up with is binding across the universe for all time. So mm-hmm. I believe that the question here, and tell me if you agree, is not whether or not you should only bring one meat and cook it. It's more if mm-hmm. you are a patron of of that cookout and you have like first dibs on either a hamburger or a hot dog, which are both staples of the cookout, and no, no doubt you'll mm-hmm. have both. Which one are you supposed to go for? Are you going to get the premium food, whatever it is that we decide it to be, or are you going to be the loser who was too busy playing Frisbee and then came over late and had to get the runner up? And just feel bad because it wasn't what you wanted all along. <laughs> right? Uh, have you or I ever been the one that's off playing Frisbee when the food arrives? No. And I love playing Frisbee. <laughs> but it's, when I, I smell too, the but food. It's, if I know the burgers are coming off. Yeah. yeah. I turn into me at the airport when it's time to board. And if I'm in group 12 and they're at group one, I'm standing right by where we walk on to the side, to the side mm-hmm. and before everybody yeah. freaks out. But I know like, oh, the food's coming soon. I better be over here. This is where the food's <laughs> – I like, become a dog. That's what it is. I become a dog yeah. when there's cooking happening. I'm just showing up hoping to get any of the food that is being cooked immediately. So what does the dog reach for first? The dog reaches for whatever's in front of it. I've, have you ever seen That's a dog true. outside of like – if you give a dog like broccoli, it'll, or, or some other like weird, like a healthier food, it'll, it'll, the dog will eat it and like chew it for a second and then spit it back out. They don't do that with meat. Oh, that is us. <laughs> um. <laughs> what, um, what are your other, b- before we get into the meats though, mm-hmm. what are the other staples? What are your must haves for a cookout? What are the foods that you, absolutely need to have there i always have to have uh, a cooler full of beer some sort of snack food something to put on the grill and the condiments for it uh now the condiments are where i will frequently have a little fun if i've decided i'm going to marinate something first uh and bring it with me i will set the condiments according to the marinade so if I've marinated something in sort of a Southwest thing, this is for burgers specifically. If I've done something uh, Southwest, I will get cabbage and uh, mix a little sour cream with adobo sauce and mix that all together so it's shredded and in a bag. Cabbage works great, uh, A, because it holds up, and uh, B, when you put it in bags, you can prep everything the day before. It's not just the cabbage, it's the burgers too and everything. Prep it the day before, put it in plastic bags, then just bring the cooler with you and you can dump them out right onto the grill. That is my, uh, that's my favorite way to grill. So I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll sometimes put together full on recipes if I'm not just doing like tomato slices, cheese, burgers, and hot dogs. Here's the thing. Can I go back a little bit? You mentioned, you mentioned that you were coming at this from the angle of an eater. Right. Uh, I think that there are two different answers depending on whether you're coming at it from the angle of an eater or the angle of a cook. Okay. Because if you're the eater, in my opinion, the burger wins. That is the, it's the tastier, the heartier, the more thought out, the more involved, the more elaborate, uh, event food. Okay. But if I'm the cook, hot dogs, buns, and a jar or a a bottle of mustard 
are about the easiest thing in the world. You can't screw up grilling a hot dog. It's real easy to make a complete mess and screw up cooking burgers. And you wind up with a workstation that's covered in, uh, not really blood, but whatever that pink juice is that comes out of burger. No, meat. it's blood. It's, it's, blood. no, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately, I have found out that most meat would be gray that we buy in the store, so they're pumped full of ink if you're not getting the fancy organic stuff, which I never am. <laughs> you get, like, um, the bag of frozen patties. When you talk about cooking, though, you're talking about what's easier because you're assuming there are a ton of people, but then... By that standard, maybe the, the hamburger would win as well because you can take such care. You can season it before you make, you can hand make the patties. You can buy the giant stack of patties. Like you have a lot of different options there as well. All of it is, uh, inked in some way. I wish they would tattoo burgers. If they're going to put ink on it, why not give it like a cool tribal? <laughs> yeah. Give it, give it some real ink, you guys. Come on. I'm eating the Chinese symbol for strength. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's just this, the Chinese symbol for sucker who got this tattoo. <laughs> but s- some people do love hot dogs and, and it's not necessarily because, Hey, it's the best, uh, possible gourmet food choice for me and more about there's a memory attached to it. Like hot dogs are generally a saltier. They have a very specific taste to them unless you start getting into like – are we counting th- – this is maybe another distinction. Are, hot dogs, we're talking about like chicken, pork, beef, franks. We're not talking about bratwurst or cheese-filled worst. Well, or- uh, we – you're really stacking the deck against hot dogs, aren't you? Well, no, I'm, I'm asking. I'm saying the one that you reach for first and I'm not talking about the good hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like you really you have this thing against hot dogs in this episode. I no, I I would consider bratwursts and sausages because if I'm grilling out, that's what I'm gonna bring because I feel bad bringing just hot dogs and not going through the elaborate trouble of burgers. Right. I'll think to myself, oh, let me just get the good hot dogs, the fancy, you know, andouille or the uh, or bratwursts or some of those that are already pre cooked. I like pre cooked sausages though. On a grill. Well, I like to cook them. Too. Ah, forget. You know what? I just like eating on a grill. How? I can't decide. <laughs> well, I was more asking than trying to stack the deck one way or the other because I didn't know if it opened yeah. up too much uh, of a of a a bag of uh, a bag of worms. You ever? You know when you open up those um, worm bags and the worms <laughs> get everywhere? I hate that. Hang on a second. I have to change my worm bag. Okay, I'll hold. Oh, is that how your and I'm is back. that how your mouth got numb? <laughs> a couple yeah, of those worms jumped gross. in there, and you were just trying to scrape Oof. them out. Something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so disgusting. And now I'm gonna have nightmares. So thank you. Well, the reason why I asked what you like to have at a cookout mm-hmm. is because there are certain essentials that I that I like to have there. Those being, I mean, you talked about just a general side, but for me, you know what? First of all, how rude of me! You asked me a question and I didn't ask it back. When clearly that's what you were angling for. I apologize. <laughs> Look, anytime I show interest in you, it's because I want you to show interest in me. You should know that by now. We've known each other for almost 15 years now. Oh, I stopped listening seconds ago. <laughs> but uh, no, the, the reason why I asked, I wanted those specifics. You sort of glommed over them. I have specific stuff that I love that to me is like if I go to – a barbecue and you've got like mission tortilla strips and that's the only chip you have. I I love mission tortilla strips. They're great. And I know that they're cheap and they come in that giant paper bag or whatever. But to me, if I like, I want Lay's potato chips, those like greasy. Really? Yeah. Like that just means that to me is, is a cookout. And I love like kosher. Yeah. Pickles. There are certain sort of Americana thing. Yeah. Pickles are one. Yeah, that 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 very Americana backyard spread. Yes, I do. If I'm not getting fancy, um, yeah, I I I absolutely love it. What is on your What is on your table always? Uh, there's always, uh, in terms of condiments, it's always Heinz ketchup and what? We're done. <laughs> and hot and well, that's for the hot for the hamburgers, please. For the hot dogs, okay. I would put like a French's. 
yellow mustard. I don't like the spicy. You don't brown. go brown. I'm not a big uh, brown mustard guy. I, I appreciate it more now than I did as a kid. My mother was into it. She liked the spicier mustard. But for me, it was like bright yellow mustard on top. And I, I, I would have relish or something there for the people who want it. I'm not a relish guy. I just want some mustard on the hot dog and that's it. Yeah. I want, as you know, the picture that, uh, you see on the advertisement. <laughs> it has to look exactly like it. Yeah. The squiggly, uh, Lombard street of mustard and the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> freeway median of relish. It occurs to me, and all the time we've known each other, I don't think we've ever been in a situation where I've seen you prepare a hot dog, and I really want to see that. Oh, I'm good at it. I'm real good at it, bro. I bet you are, bro. I even ended that with bruh. I was that excited about being good at it, and <laughs> it, and I was so defensive of it. And confident. Like a, you have a, I, may, I bet you make a good hot dog too, Hal. Uh, Plain, right? Just the bun and the no, meat, No, it right? looks like a mess, because I, what I do is I try to put the mustard on the bun rather than the hot dog. And then I rotate oh. the hot dog around so there's mustard everywhere. But, man, if I go to a ball game... <laughs> Wait a minute. Go back. Did I know this from our first episode? Did you tell that story? Maybe. I don't know. I try to keep That's some That's a great secrets. technique. Yeah. Well, you want the, the the mustard everywhere. I mean, sometimes I'll rotate the hot dog. Sometimes I won't. But the mustard goes mm-hmm. in the bun because that way you get mustard everywhere. Otherwise, every time you take a bite, you get mustard all over your face and it spills out. And you're not getting – like I don't want to put sauce on my spaghetti and then eat it in a way where all the sauce winds up on the floor or on a napkin. I want it to be on the pasta so I can eat it. Sure. This is – are you eating pasta hot dogs? We're talking about hot dogs, right? You know not to hold it vertically like an ice cream cone, yes? Well, I do now. <laughs> okay, that may be your problem. Mm. If the mustard is going everywhere, I see. Hold just on. Hold it up. Hold it up like a canoe. Let me write this down. Canoe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, yeah. We should just call hot dogs meat canoes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what this really is: uh, are cow frisbees or meat canoes? Yeah. Which are we gonna pick? Uh, listen, if it's just based on the name, I think a canoe is more useful than a frisbee, but everybody's going to reach for the frisbee before they reach for the canoe. But don't toss it, don't toss it around while the actual frisbees are being cooked, because then you'll miss out on all the food. That's true. I'm very obsessed with people throwing frisbees for, for whatever reason. You are. Um, have you played ultimate meat frisbee? Oh my, it's the best. Oh yeah. That's the real test of somebody who loves meat is how good are you at ultimate meat frisbee and how familiar are you with the game? <laughs> have you ever done uh have you ever done one of those uh meat challenges like eat the giant steak and you can get the thing for free? I haven't, but when I was not yet 35 for my 35th birthday and my uh my darling wife who's in the other room can attest to this and probably a good thing that we didn't do it. I wanted to go to Amarillo, Texas. Where there is a steakhouse off of I-40 that I think was featured in the show Man vs. Food where you go – Yes, the big Texan. Yes. I think it's like a 72-ounce steak, a baked potato, and a salad, and you have to eat the whole thing. And I really want – I for some reason, I've always been obsessed with the idea of a, of a food challenge, but I've never done it. That was the one I wanted mm-hmm. to do, and I, I – at some point, if I'm eating meat again, I would like to, I would like to do that. I think it would be fun. What, what about you? Uh, I've been to the big Texan. I did not go for the giant 96 ounce steak or however many it is. I love the idea. I've wanted to do it. I've put a lot of food in my stomach, uh, through the course of my life, yes. sometimes all at once. And, um, why not, you know, get a prize for it? Do you th- uh, actually, you know what? I did win. I did win a minor one. I didn't do something as big as that one in Chicago. We had a little diner. That had a thing called, I think it was called the beast. It was insane. And if you were drunk or hungover and overweight and, uh, sad enough about finals or girls as I was at this particular time, um, you will eat this thing, which is a pile of hash browns, two burger patties, right. a fried egg on each burger patty, sure. bacon, sausage, ham, little, all on top. Too much at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> Smothered in cheese. Yeah. Uh, and then chili on top. And did you, you ate the whole thing? 
I ate the whole thing and I got a certificate, which I had in like my box of memories uh, until a couple of years ago when I pulled it out and I was like, what am I doing? And I threw it away. <laughs> Is everything in that box a reminder of something terribly sad in your life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's oh, here's the football team I didn't make. <laughs> a bunch of photographs from funerals and oh, God, certificates. Yeah. I see. Do you, I was. <laughs> it's a lot. A lot of second place ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you if you thought you would be good at at eating a large amount of food, but you proved that you are. Because I go into like, um, there's a a cheesesteak place in in Philly where they have mm-hmm. like. I think it's on a lot of them, but in this one in particular, which is one of the big ones, they have a plaque on the wall that's like, on this day, uh, Steve Ambrose came in and ate 17 and a half cheesesteaks. Like some crazy amount in like- 17 and a half? In like an hour or something. Maybe it's not that much. It's like 11. Whatever. It, once you get over three, you're, you're in insane territory. <laughs> and when you're at three, when you're at more than one, you're pushing the laws of physics. But this yeah, person – more than one in a sitting is a lot. And it's – these people are not always – like if you go to those places with the eating challenges and they show who's completed it, it's always like skinny people. They look like reformed juggalos and it drives me crazy. <laughs> is there such a thing as a reformed juggalo or once a juggalo, always a juggalo? Well, once a juggalo, always a juggalo. But they, some of them – Jug try. life is tattooed across my stomach. <laughs> But I look at these people and and I'm like, you shouldn't be able to do that. I should be the one. I look at it and go, I could eat a ton of cheesesteaks or whatever. But I don't, I don't, well, I want to know. Like that's the, I sh- it should be like. You're never going to know how many you can eat until you try. Hal. I know, but I, the things I should be asking myself and we all should, should be like, how far can I run? How long can <laughs> I, can I do this thing that is healthy for me? Or how many books can I read in a month? Instead of like, how many of these grease sandwiches can I shove in my mouth before I give out? Well, how many of these commercials can you shove in your ears before you give out? Well, let's find out. Thanks, Maximum Fun. Take it away. Hello, and welcome to Podphone. What type of podcast are you looking for? You have chosen funny podcasts about bad movies. Rated R. May we recommend... The Flop House. Three friends talk about bad movies and make each other and you laugh. Rated R. The Flop House is playing at your ears. If you download it right now or whenever. Rated R. To purchase tickets to The Flop House, you don't need to do that. Just download it. The Flop House. Rated R. For nudity, I guess. Mugs, shirts, stickers, patches, tanks, and more are yours for the purchasing at MaxFunStore.com. Hey, you already love the podcasts, so why not take this to the next level and outfit your home and bod with our merch? MaxFunStore.com. Because if you have to wear a shirt, it should be one of ours. Oh, I'm so full from all those commercials. Man, I am stuffed. You know what I could go for right now? Tell me. Commercial dessert. Oh, com- oh, like a nice little 15 second. Oh. oh, yeah. Just not, not much. Just mm-hmm. a sweet little, like, that's got a little, like, uh, no purchase necessary. Oh, at yeah. The end. Yeah. Yeah. I love when they have a little yeah, bit of that. Like it's, like it's the cherry on top. But we can't have dessert until we clean our plate and we don't even know what's on our plate yet, Hal. You're right. Well, I know it's got to be laced potato chips. You balked at chips. Why, why is that? Why were you surprised? Um, I, uh, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't surprised. They do feel like Americana. Those Lay's potato chips to me are the last bag that I buy. Okay. I will buy the Lay's potato chips if there's nothing else. The thin, crispy ones. I like the wavy ones because I need something with heft. Okay. You want a thicker chip. That becomes, the bigger the bag, the bigger the ratio of crumbs to whole chips by the time you're done with the bag. And you only ever get the giant bag at a barbecue. Yeah, and and even if people dump it out into a bowl, like that's the worst mm-hmm. thing. There needs to be some vacuum system where all the chips are brought up so that what's on top stays on top. Because otherwise, all the dust mm-hmm. is on, like you're the first one in the bowl. I mean, of course I am because hey, they, somebody just put food out. I got to get some of that. I'm like a gangster when you move into my neighborhood. If you bring food out, <laughs> oh, let me get my let me get my beak wet on those chips you put out on that table over there. Yeah, you got to get your cut. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep this bowl safe for you. 
But you get when you, if you <laughs> sure wouldn't want nothing to happen to it. <laughs> That's a nice looking French onion dip you got there. <laughs> um, but if you go into that bowl first and they've just dumped it in, you're going to get a, a ton of just grease dust and it's no good. But if they just poured the bag into the bowl, you don't walk over if you're the first guy in. You just reach for what's on top. You don't like, you know, give it a give it a little once through, find the good size chips on the bottom. I'll pick around a little bit, but I'm not I, I'm not like running a one of those like lottery ball tourniquets where I have to flip everything over to get chips. <laughs> I just go in, you know, you try to reach in from like a side angle. Cause it's not all mm-hmm. like evaporated dust on, on top, but you want to get the big gnarly chips. That, that, that hopefully either you hurt yourself trying to put the whole thing in your mouth or you physically cannot put it in your mouth. That is a potato chip. <laughs> All right. We're going to discuss potato chips on a different episode because I think potato or corn is a valid topic. Oh, sure. Um, but let's get back to the meat. We've got to de- determine this. I feel for me, it is if I'm cooking, Hot dogs are easier and I want to spend less time at the grill and just enjoy my day. If that's the case, if it's a a typical grill out and I'm setting out all the classics, that's what I'll want to do. If I'm doing something a little fancier, maybe I'm camping and there's a grill out there and I want to do some sort of marinade and a predetermined topping, then I'll make burgers. As a patron, I always reach for the burger over the hot dog because it's going to fill me up more to get back out there and play more Frisbee. We got to get – the Frisbee game is going hot and heavy. We got to get out there for some Frisbee. It is. So that's that's where I stand right now on it. Um, which angle do you want to look at it from? Uh, well, let's let's talk a little bit about about the cooking of it, okay? Not which is easier to okay. cook because it's obviously hot dogs. You can line more of them up on a grill, feed more people uh, in, in a quicker fashion. But which which do you think has the stronger potential to go wrong? Like it, a hot dog – Oh, a burger. Absolutely. Yeah, you can burn it to a crisp, and I don't like a burned mm-hmm. burger. Some people like – do you like char on a burger and a hot dog both or just one or what's the deal? Oh, I like char. I'm a big char fan. You? I uh do not care for it at all. Okay. I don't – Really? I don't want a crunchy burger. Okay. Do you want to just – so uh, next time we next time we grill out, uh, I'll make sure that I boil your hot dog and burger. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with boiling a hot dog. It gets cooked just as much. It's plump and juicy. It doesn't have that thing. Like a hot dog oh, explodes on the grill. A hot dog, boiling a hot dog ruins it. You don't get any of that good sear on the outside. Oh. But you like the What about sear? those lines? You have to have those lines for the picture-perfect version. Oh, well, what if I gave you a picture that didn't have the lines on it? Then you wouldn't care, right? Ugh, that'd be a terrible picture of a hot dog. <laughs> what if Diane Arbus took a photo of a hot dog without <laughs> those grill lines on it? And but with that, is waveform, Diane Arbus the one that puts babies in like flower costumes? Maybe. What if it's a hot dog that looks like a sunflower with <laughs> two sticks to prop up its front? Look, it scares me. Or uh, or a hamburger with a bumblebee costume on, laying on its back. <laughs> A hot dog that looks like a Weimaraner with those piercing eyes on it. I know that's not Diane Arbus. That's that other dude. <laughs> Wait, can we talk about baby pictures for a second? Yeah, absolutely. How? Re- Why wouldn't we? We're not doing an episode about meat. <laughs> well, babies are human meat in smaller form. Wh- Gross. When did the trend start of people getting newborn babies to pose with their hands under their chin like they're just straight chilling out and they – and like this, like it's cool. I totally can support my own neck, and I just use my hands to do it all the time for fun. Because it takes my understanding. I guess you could prop a baby up like that, but there are like modeling rods for that. That's uh, creepy and dark and awful, and no one should subject their child to that at infant age. That said, are they adorable? <laughs> yeah. All, all when right, I look well. at it, I just think about like that's not the natural position of that baby. Like, well, there's also that like jacked three year old with abs. That's not the natural position for that kid. But <laughs> you know, he's on the internet. Oh, those kids are scary. Yeah, I wouldn't want to meet one of those kids in an alley for a fight. <laughs> I wouldn't want to meet a regular kid in an alley for a fight. 
I wouldn't want to meet anyone in an alley for a fight. Why? You- I don't know if there's any reason I would want to meet someone in an alley, yeah. except maybe for a cookout. Let's figure this out. Okay, fine. I will say though, meet those babies that when they're in that pose. <laughs> It reminds uh-huh. me of like if you take a picture of a really cute dog in an outfit that's on its hind legs, you're just going to sit there thinking that dog is not comfortable. I've seen a dog on its hind legs. They're constantly on like like a tightrope walker that just got on the wire for the <laughs> first time. So it just seems – it just seems odd. I'm sure that babies don't mind, but it bothers me. And speaking of dogs. Yes. Hot dogs. What do you think about hot dogs, Hal? You know, there's something to to this where if I was at a cookout and they only had hot dogs, I think I would be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Because it would probably be like a hot dog or like a bratwurst. Like there'd be a bunch of specialty meats around. You wouldn't be okay with it if it was just burgers? It would it, – not that I wouldn't be okay with it because I love hamburgers. But it would be odd. It would feel like a different kind of cookout. There's something about – the the cookout where the hot dog feels more essential to me than the hamburger. And I'm not saying that's the decision, but ju- there's something about it that sticks out in my head. You know what I mean? Well, the hot dog is significantly easier. It's nothing to throw a few hot dogs on if you're already making hamburgers. It's a lot more mess and thought and preparation to add hamburgers if you're already doing hot dogs. Right. And th- there's a lot more variation in hamburgers as well. Like if the people hand make it, then that can be crappy. If they buy the cheap mm-hmm. ones and cook them wrong, that can be crappy. I've seen uh, – Can I give you a couple of tips that I've figured out yes. for burgers on the grill? Please. Uh, you know how they always get real fat in the middle? Sure. Uh, smush it in the middle with your thumb before you put it on the grill so that it has an indentation in it and then it will grill flat. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Because that middle part – swells up so there you go um but not everybody here's where i think you're going with this if i may sure not everybody knows that trick not everybody knows lots of tricks and not everybody knows how to cook a burger anyone can make a hot dog anyone can cook a hot dog they are ubiquitous at a backyard grill they are the easiest to prepare much easier than burgers and they are uniformly loved by backyard enthusiasts across this great nation. Yes. So with that said, do we have one that's coming out on top right now? I mean, I feel like both of us are already headed in the same direction. And I'm just trying to figure out if that's the cook in us, the eater in us, or if we're, if we're properly and and objectively looking at this just so that we're both happy with the decision let me uh let me throw another thought at you then sure if if we are both cooks we are both eaters what's the great equalizer of this backyard cookout situation is that it's a party so we are revelers that said <laughs> what is going to make the most sense as a reveler, <laughs> a hot dog, a hot dog requires less time to hold. You know, y- you can eat a hot dog more on the go than you can eat a burger. Uh, the cook spends less time worrying about it. It's more forgiving if you screw it up. It can sit out on the table longer. So as party goers, I think the clear winner is hot dog as uh, cooks go cook at a party who wants to have fun with everyone else. I feel like hot dog wins. The only way that I think burger wins is in the consumer end. And isn't that just being selfish? Uh, that is a good point. I, I do want to say, first of all, nobody's ever called me a, a reveler before. You sounded like, a, a like, <laughs> like the senator in a Hercules film. We are revelers. <laughs> <laughs> Join me at the vomitorium. I was wondering why you laughed so heartily at reveling. I thought it can't be that he disdains parties that much that he's laugh scoffing at the mere idea of one. No, it's that you're all of a sudden have turned it like we are revelers, are we not? At this barbecue, mm. but uh, uh, there is something to like. Uh, I get it. There's a social aspect to hot dogs where you can just hold it in your hand, take a couple bites, and then you're good to go. 
there's also something to uh, instead of instead of looking at the grill as a place where you don't want to be. I find a lot of time at, a lot of times at cookouts, things tend to fracture into groups anyway. There's always a group mm-hmm. of people that are hanging out around the grill. That's true. And I love being in that group of people. Yeah. But I will frequently leave while I still have duties. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I know. For God's uh, sake. Got duties uh, at the park. I'm done. With, I'm, I'm done with this show. We're done. <laughs> Look, do we agree that the grill is nature's water cooler. It's where yes. we gather outside to talk with one another. So I think as far as being a reveler goes, I don't think the hot dog has a significant advantage because you have to spend time there anyway, especially if you do – like do you ever grill corn? Uh, I do grill corn. I love grilled corn. Do you grill – um do you agree? I feel like the thing that gets screwed up the most, if I see somebody's spending a lot of time making chicken, like there are other meats that come in yeah, that take real estate away. Save chicken for some other thing. Yeah, don't grill it the chicken. It takes forever. Yeah, it's it seems like a good idea, and I know you feel like you're being healthier or fancier. Just cook the chicken in a in a different way or at a different time <laughs> when there are there, we need that grill space. You can't have your, your salmonella chicken going down <laughs> raw on the hottest part of the grill. Well, we got burgers and hot dogs to cook y'all. Yeah, exactly. And also if you're, if you're hosting a cookout, bring it like a net or something to throw over the food. Cause guess what lives outside flies. And guess what doesn't care if you wave your hands a bunch flies. They're going to find a way to land on that. It's not like oh, I wave, you waved your hand in one direction and the fly is not going to figure it out. They're not that dumb. So, Hal, are you proposing like uh, a malaria net over the whole campsite or just a little food tent? Just a little food tent. Okay. Keep it clean. Have you seen those? They're great. I've seen them. They're, they, they're sort of like umbrellas in their uh, little wire frames with material stretched over them. And you just put them over food when you're having a barbecue. Yeah, it's simple. Or a grill out. See, I keep saying. Yeah, it. that's what it is. It's a barbecue, Mark. Don't fight it. All right. <laughs> I mean, I fought doing improv forever. Then I realized I just sounded like a jerk for a year and a half. So forget it. <laughs> and now you're teaching that class, and people can still get uh, information on online. That's right. Doing improv with Mark Gags Gagliardi. Dot com. Is it the whole thing? Is the yeah? <laughs> you're such a. <laughs> Happy April Fools two uh, years ago. Okay. Uh so do you feel like you are ready to make a decision? Uh I am absolutely ready to make a decision. I'm ready to make a decision too. What is your decision? Oh, I thought I thought you could tell and we're just gonna say people of the world. Oh people of the world. Oh. I know. Well, hold on. Well, I didn't you... say you could do the people of the world. <laughs> I wasn't even going to finish it. I realized as I was doing that bit, I started to talk and I went, I have no idea how to do this. Yeah. I'm very scared right now. Do you want now. me to do it? And if I'm, if, if I somehow have arrived at the decision that was not your decision, we can talk about it more. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. People of the world, happy Labor Day. It's a Labor Day in US and Canada. And that means everybody's going to go grill out, cook out on a barbecue, but it's not barbecue food. That is an important distinction to make. And when you're out there throwing the Frisbee around, as I know every single one of you will be, tossing that plastic disc, you're going to be thinking to yourself, oh, I hope that that grilled food is ready soon. I'm so hungry. Should have had breakfast. I was going to have a banana this morning. Then I looked at it and went, no, you know what? The cookout starts at 11, so I'll be fine for a little while. There'll probably be chips out. Guess what? There weren't chips out. Everyone decided to wait till after the kickball game to make food. Now you're stuck waiting until 2 p.m. and you woke up at 8. And you just want to eat. It's the worst. I get it. Oh, it drives me crazy. Have a little food out. Some of us like to hover around that table just hoping that some food shows up. That's all we want. But when it comes to our real heart's desire, the food that all of us should want is not some meat canoe that gets thrown in a in a canoe of bread to sail on the river of your mouth. It's the meat frisbee, the hamburger, sweet, juicy hamburger. Think of all the fun stuff you can do. Oh, who wants cheese on their hamburger? I do. 
Who wants cheese stuffed inside the hamburger? Oh, that sounds exotic. I haven't had that often, but I've heard it's great. Juicy Lucy, I believe it's called? Yes, I'll have one of those as well. That's right, two hamburgers. If you don't move fast enough from that Frisbee game, I'm going to eat your hamburger. And then you're going to be stuck eating one of those hot dogs. The runner-up. Asked and answered. Hamburgers! You knew it from the beginning, Steve-O! That is not at all the answer that I thought you were going to give. And yet... <laughs> and yet... I, and, and yet, apparently, uh, you don't care about being a party reveler or a cook. For you, it's just about consumption. It is. Is it about that for you? No, man. It's about the rebel. <laughs> oh, man. We're revelers. But you know what? You already said asked and answered, so I will stand I have to stand by it. I I I went into this thinking it was going to be hamburger, but then I thought that hot dogs are easier. I'm totally fine with it being hamburger. See, I I thought it was going to be hot dogs for a while too, and then I thought, well, what do we really want? Like which should you have? At a barbecue. I think that's... Yeah, if you're reaching out, you yeah, you reach out for a burger. Yeah. And there's also, like, if you make a good burger, you have pride in your craftsmanship. Whereas hot dogs, like, anybody could do it. All right. I'm... Look, I'm I'm happy with I it. I want to make sure you're okay. I am okay with it. All right. We won't need to revisit this one at Christmas, if that's what you mean. Fair enough. Or if, at our... At our annual uh, reversal. <laughs> yes, this will not make it to the to the annual reversal. So there you go. Thank you, Steve-O, for the topic. And everybody go check out the Hobcast. Uh, there are many more topics for us to discuss. So reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets or on Maximum Funds subreddit. There's probably a flame war happening right now. You can hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash We Got This Podcast. Or you can email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, to our musicians, Mike Furman and Jonathan Dinerstein, for our award-winning theme song and score, respectively. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thank you, as always, to you, our listeners. Man, I wish I was outside at a grill-out with you right now. Right outside a stadium, in the bed of a pickup truck, with a... Big old ball game of Americana going on behind us. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Boy, I got real Tennessee right there at the end. <laughs> that sounded like a Bob Seger song. <laughs> hey, you know what? You're my silver bullet, Hal, and I'm your werewolf. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And but for Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Loveland. And happy Labor Day, everybody. Don't forget, we, we got, got this. this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.